Jesus I'm at church. <laughs> He's already here. Don't look at us up here. He's already here. <laughs> you in your homes, if you needed healing tonight, the healer's here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. What an honor, Jesus, <laughs> that we once blasphemed your name, God, but you were rich in mercy, yes. and you would never given up on us. We owe you everything. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, help us exalt Jesus tonight. <laughs> like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. <laughs> I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Listen, the tree of this world is barren to your soul. But this tree of Christ crucified, oh, life in abundance, life in abundance. Just look to the Lamb tonight. You needing healing in your bodies, in your minds, in your hearts. Just look to the crucified Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, exalt Jesus. Exalt Jesus. And have your way. Oh, we love you.
Lord Jesus, we love you so much, Lord. There is truly no one like you, Lord. You are wonderful, Lord. We worship you, Lord, the King that gave everything he had, Lord. We praise you, Holy Father, for giving your Son, Lord. And we remember your great sacrifice tonight, Lord. And we bless your name, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Guys, uh, you at the front, you can uh, be welcome back to your seats as we step into a time of uh, tithes and offerings tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you're doing in the room, Lord. You are so worthy, Jesus. I'm going to be uh, reading tonight from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it's uh, going to be Paul's uh, farewell to the Corinthians here. Um, Paul writes, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And this passage is, is very, very simple to, to understand. But one of the ways that we remain steadfast in the Lord, one way to be immovable one way to abound in the work of the Lord is to bring our offering to him. One, it's what he's commanded us to do, but it, truly it's a joy that we get to give to the Lord tonight. And um, the reason it's a joy is because we know it's not in vain. You know, I, I think the last time I shared, I talked about where your treasure is, there your heart is at. And, and when we give to the hands of God, we're putting our finances, what we've earned, what he's given us the ability to earn into the hands of God. And even on the way here, I was, uh, I was reading a book, um, the Athanasius wrote about the incarnation of the Lord, and, and he was writing about why the Lord even had a body, and that his seeing the Lord's body actually is like seeing the Lord's love for us. The whole reason he confined himself to a body was to save us, and I thought, man, this is the God that I get to come into the building tonight, and I get to lift my hands and worship. I get to give to him of my finances. He gave me the ability to, to bring increase to myself and to my family, and I get to give that back into his hands. I said, what an honor, Lord. And, and to even this morning hear the good report of what the Lord did in California over the last week and all the salvations that was seen. I just, I'm like, wow, Lord, we get to partner. We get to be a part of this, of your great work. So tonight as we give, just, uh, just think of all the Lord's done for us and the privilege and the honor that it is that we get to give to the Lord. So, Lord, I just, I thank you, Lord, that it is truly an honor, Lord. It's, it's not a cliche to say this, Lord. It really is an honor, Lord, when we see you rightly, Lord, when we see how much you love us, it is truly an honor to give into your hands, God. We thank you for, for all the blessings, Lord, and we thank you for these opportunities when we get to bless you, Lord, when we get to give into your hands and to your kingdom, Lord, and the work that you're doing on the earth, and we know that it's not in vain, Lord, that your work is not in vain, God. So, Lord, we bless your name tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you know every need that we have, God, that you are faithful and true, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. So, you guys, if you are in the room and you need an envelope, you can just lift your hand. We'll have an usher get that to you. You can also text the number on your screen here. And uh, to our online viewers, you'll have a number on your screen as well. And uh, we'll be right back, guys.
And then we just came back from the Jesus tour. Amen. <laughs> Um, it was an incredible time, and we just want to show you a quick recap video of all that the Lord did. I know of an eternal stain remover more powerful than the stain of any sin, more powerful than drug addiction, perversion, hatred, unforgiveness, adultery, idolatry, materialism, lust of the flesh, anger, pride. I know of a stain remover. It's the blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. It's the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the last Adam, not just the second Adam, the perfect man, the blood of the Son of the living God, the blood of the man from Galilee, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth will wash your sin away tonight. And it, hadn't, it wouldn't move. It's been severe pain, and now I can bend it. And, uh, I have no pain. This one has been hurting so bad, like arthritis for, for three years, now it's gone. I started feeling like electricity just going through my whole entire body. My hands were red and swollen when you prayed for me, and they're not red or swollen. The pain's gone. Gradually, the pain went and went, and now it's all gone. So it's all gone. And I don't have the burning sensation anymore. It hurt to go up and down the stairs, but now it doesn't. Thank the Lord for all He did. Well, we have the great honor of having family with us tonight, and Pastor Benny is here. Before we before we clap, I think there are few, and I think you would all agree that open the scriptures and begin to talk about Jesus and make you more hungry than when you came in. And when he sings, when that, when that keyboard is played and he opens his mouth, it's like we're taken, we're taken right in and that is fruit of years and years and years of being a friend of Jesus. And the scripture says in 1 Timothy 5.17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. So why don't we stand and just honor, double honor, Pastor Benny Hinn as we welcome him. Thank you. Please, thank you. I love you too. Take a seat, please. Thank you. You're amazing, all of you. Well, love you. You know what? I want to say thank you. Uh, where is that card? Chad, where are you? Hello? You sweet young people touched my heart in a big way. I only have one of them, but you gave me three of these. Yes. And I read some of them. I was deeply touched. I did not know you even did that. And Jessie had one, so I just got it from her. Well, she's not here, but her car. You're so kind. I want all the students to stand up. Look at that. What a wonderful group of people. Can we give them all a big God bless you? Amazing. All right, now, be seated. Graduation is this week, right? Awesome, wow. Well, I really, look, I think my favorite thing to do now is to be with the students on when, when, when I show up. And this last week was just fantastic. And the Lord is really precious, isn't he? Listen, I want to talk to you about my wonderful children, as you know, are in California, Michael and Jessica. How many of you, just in case, how many of you have never been here before? This is first time. Would you stand up, please? I'm sure they already had that. Let's go. Wow. Welcome, welcome, my goodness. 
Welcome. This is a very special place because the Lord is here. And uh, Michael and Jesse, of course, are in California still. They'll be here tomorrow. They'll be back tomorrow. And um, what they're doing in, you know, going out and ministering the word like that is really important because this wonderful nation needs the anointing like that. And uh, God is really opening the way for them to do that. So as the church, I know you support them, but maybe I can say just a few things about that. When we had the, the, the crusades, I would come back on Sunday and have to show people clips to keep them excited, you know, because uh, it's important to get the word out. And so thank you for your support. Really, I mean that. Thank you for supporting Michael and Jessica, Jessica your pastors. They are my children, of course. Um, and I'm so proud of David and Lily. I really am. They are my wonderful family. My Lily is my baby. And David gave me two beautiful grandsons. Oh, my, my. Judah is so cute. He's so cute. Well, anyways, listen. Let's stand and thank the Lord for what he's going to do here tonight. And uh, Jim is, is on the way. He... His flight, I guess, landed just a little while ago. So, Robert, just begin to play that beautiful instrument. And let's just thank the Lord for his goodness. Lord, we bless your name. You're our God. Wonderful Lord. What a privilege, what a privilege to serve you. What a privilege to... Follow you, especially follow you, Lord. And to love you and to know you. Who are we? Your God Almighty. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and bless him in the Holy Ghost? Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Maru kanta pialba kanti mentole. Yene, yene, kinti palvi manu, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. I worship you. Hallelujah. I give you praise, Lord. Mente kinti palval al fitrum yanta kanti mantalu. Wonderful Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name for you are great you do me recall so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do me recall so great. There is no one else. You deserve the glory, tell him, saints, and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands. We bless your holy name. You deserve all the honor and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You are great. 
you to me recall so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do me recall so great there is no one else like you there is no one else and the people of god said amen, amen. take your seats god bless you i have a message tonight that is really, can I just put this, uh, that somewhere, please? Oh, here. I pray that the Lord will give you eyes to see tonight and ears to hear. Let me hear an amen. amen. And if I also can give you this, Robert, I thank you. Wonderful. I'd like you to go with me to Ephesians. By the way, tonight you'll have to forgive me if I shout. You don't often hear me shout, but this is a very exciting word. All right. And by the way, it's wonderful to see my friend the Colberts here tonight. This is Dr. Don Colbert, very famous all over the world, and his wife Mary. Would you stand up so they see who you are? And this is the first time to come to church here. They were, they were members of OCC years ago. That's where we met. Goodness gracious, how long ago was that? Four, huh? How many years? 40 years ago. Wow. I'm getting old and so are you, Doc. <laughs> but you look good. All right, so... I want to I read a portion of the word, and I pray the Lord tonight will really give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And I want to hear an amen. amen. So let's begin reading in verse 15. And what I want to talk about, and this is the first time I, I really bring this message anywhere. I want to talk about the power of God, but I don't mean the anointing. And I don't mean the part of God that people think about when they say part of God, they think about something you feel. No, no. I want to talk about the part of God mentioned in, in, in this portion. Now listen carefully to what Paul says. I would like to begin reading again at verse 16. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that... The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now watch the language of verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word? The exceeding greatness of his power is a term only used here in the whole Bible. Look at me, all of you. When, when the Bible talks about creation, it mentions God's eternal power. That's in Romans 1.20. You mind putting that up for them, please? Notice what, uh, I'm just showing you the language because it's important to notice the difference and why do we read exceeding greatness. All right. In, when it comes to creation, it says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even what? His eternal power and Godhead. So when God created the earth, the universe, it's his eternal power, not exceeding great power. Meaning, there's more power that's coming towards you 
than the power used to create the world. I'm, I'm, I'm getting your attention. Yeah. So you have to pay attention. Like, why is he using such language? The exceeding greatness of his power. Let me, let me show you something else. Can we go to Exodus 13, verse 9? We're going to come back to, to, to Ephesians because I really want to really get this through to you. Okay, I want to get this really through to you. To show you how important God sees you. The value you are in his sight. Are you listening? Yeah. So in Exodus 13, verse 9, it says, When God brought Israel out of Egypt, he brought them out with a strong hand. Strong hand. Say strong hand. So a whole nation comes out with his strong hand. But when he saved you, he saved you with his hand and his arm. Wow, yeah, you can say wow again when you see. Wait till you see the verse I'm going to show you about that. So it took his hand to bring a nation out. It took his arm to save you. Let's look at Psalm 98 verse 1 and show you the difference. Better listen now. If you miss this, I may have to come and lay hands on you. Look at Psalm 98, verse 1. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. What victory? Verse 2. Verse 2. Go, go, go. 2, my brother, not 3. Where's verse 2? I'll read it for you if you, don't, if you, if you can't find it, okay? All right, there. The Lord hath made known what? His what? Aha. Uh -huh. He's made known his salvation to you. His righteousness hath he openly showed, meaning the Lord Jesus, in the sight of the heathen. Now look at verse 3. Verse 3, please. Okay? He hath remembered his mercy, his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen what? The salvation of our God. So when it comes to your salvation, God used his hand and his arm to save you. That's more power. Okay? So think about when he created the world, eternal power. When he brought Israel out, his hand brought them out. When he saved you, his hand and his arm. That's why Paul uses this language in Ephesians 1, 19. Let's go back to it. And notice what it says. To us word, the power used in what? In your life. I'm going to say a few things in just a second. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to what? To us word, say it. Say it towards me. Okay. To us word it says, who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. Let's go on the next verse because it's all connected. What? Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is working in your life now. That's more power than the power that created the world. We're going to say it slowly so you can really get it. Especially you amazing young people that I love so much. You have to understand. You have to understand. More power is used in the new creation than the old. What's the old? The world. Okay. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting through. So, this talks about the new creation. And look what it says in verse, let's just keep reading to verse 23. Because it says, the, this power, the exceeding greatness of his power, mentioned in verse 19, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. It's the same power that set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. 
working in your life. That should give you a lot of joy. Far above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in, the, in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet. By that power. It's still talking about the, that power working in you. Okay? Not only raised Jesus from the dead. Not only set him at his own right hand. But he went beyond that. Far above all principalities, power, might, dominions, in every name that is named. Not only in this world, but eternally. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Now, this is like mind-boggling information already. Now, I want to, I, I, I've got to like take my time with this because it's a little deep. It's a little deep. Uh, when God created Adam, he went from dust to dust. From dust to dust. He didn't change. Just the dust became flesh, but it was still dust. Because he said from dust you are, to dust you'll go back. But to change to you... If I can say it nicely, to change to, to change dust into the image of God, that's power. It took less power to go from dust to dust. It takes exceeding incredible power to take a piece of dust and share with that dust and change that dust into the divine nature. Are you, are you getting this? Yeah. So, Paul uses this incredible language. Let's look at it one more time. You've got to really grasp this. Verse 19, Ephesians 1. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us or towards us who believe? Who believe? To turn the heart, to turn the heart of humanity from evil to good, from the world to Jesus, from sin to Jesus, takes more power to change your heart than to create the world. Took it, it actually is greater power to change you than speak the world out of nothing. Think, think about this. God took nothing and spoke into it and the earth was created. Out of nothing, he created what we are living in right now and walking upon. That's eternal power. We saw that in Romans 1.20. But to change the hearts of men from evil to holiness, from the world to God, from sin to Jesus. To mortify the lust of the flesh. Mentioned in Colossians 3 verse 5. Or to, to be crucified daily. To crucify self daily. Like Luke 9.23 says. Or to become Christ-like. To become Christ-like. Hmm, that's beyond our ability. That's beyond our power. There's nothing in us that will help us 
become Christ-like. So, so uh, I, I'm, I'm talking real slowly here because I, I really want to get this through. Think what power it's taking God and began at your salvation to transform you into the image of his son. I mean, he, he took mud and turned it into a human being. That's power. But to take that mud and turn it into his likeness. Ooh, knock, knock. We're talking about God here. Mud. Not an angel. You go, you go pick up a piece of mud out there, David. Not now, but I'm having a think. You could take a piece of mud out there and try to turn that into a, a human being. Impossible. God did it, though. He took mud and squeezed it and <laughs> breathed in that thing and it became a man. Right? It said, God created man out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his muddy nose. That nose was not flesh yet. It was still mud. And that mud became flesh, bone, blood, all the rest of it that you got now. But imagine turning that mud into the actual image of God himself. Not man, but God. My, my, my brain can't figure that one out. Because we're talking about the divine nature. We shall be like him as he is. <laughs> That's like power that is still at work in you. I can shout, but no. We got to think now, deep. We got to think deep, okay? So, would you, would you lift your hands and say, Our God is mighty to save. Our God is mighty to transform us. So let's talk about the power it took just to save you. Okay, let's just talk about that. Just, ju just to save you. Forget all the, the, the amazing power at work already in you, transforming you into the image of Jesus. All right, let's, let's talk about what it took to just save you. The Bible says something powerful. It says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, right? Can, can we look at that in Romans 1.16 quick, please, on the, even though when we know it, I'm going to talk about this because I need to talk about that. Romans 1.16. Before we say goodbye tonight, I'm going to pray for all the students. Well, I'm not going to lay hands on each one, unless God tells me. But we're going to send you, because this is the last week in school, as you know. We're going to send you home flying high. <laughs> and coming back, much higher. Hello, Jim. I'm so glad you came, Jim. Sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. It's not your fault. You're going to sit right here. You're going to sit right here. And Robert, you're going to sit right there. And you're going to learn how to play just like Jim Robert. God bless Robert. Okay, so. Um, let's, let's, let's read uh, Romans 1.16 together. I want you all to say it with me and let's read it out loud. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So this is the power that is mentioned in Ephesians 1.19, right? 
because it's unto salvation. When it comes to our salvation, it's more power than creation. More power than creating the world or Adam. So, so the gospel, the gospel is the instrument that God uses to accomplish his most wondrous work. More wondrous than the world. More wondrous than creation or the angels. Because he spoke them into being. He spoke Adam into being. But the gospel is the instrument that God uses to accomplish the most blessed, most wondrous of all his works, your salvation. Okay. Let's go to 2 Peter 1.4. 2 Peter 1.4. Because I want to I wanna keep, you know, I learned something when I was a pastor. People hear only 30% of what is taught. So you have to repeat it to, to really get it. Did you hear what I said? So all you people who want to be in the ministry have to learn something about people. They are only listening to 30%. Because their, their brains are doing this. They're thinking about the car, the tires, the mom, the dad, the business. They're nothing but what the man is saying or the woman is saying. They're all distracted, so you got to repeat. Repetition is important when it comes to teaching the Bible. Okay, so I want to I wanna read with you, and it's on the screen, I'm sure. All right, uh, let's read this beautiful verse from 2 Peter 1, 4. Whereby, out loud, out loud. Whereby are given unto us what? Great and? That by these ye might be what? Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, so here we are reading about precious, great, well, exceeding great and precious promises. What promises? That we shall be like him. These are not promises about healing your body. Or about getting the devil out. These are promises that you will become a partaker of his divine nature. I've just been telling you. I've just been telling you. I want to repeat it. When God created man, he took dust and turned him into flesh. Meaning dust to dust. No, not much change. He just took the mud and gave it a face and a body and went... Easy stuff for God, basically. But the new creation, you, it is exceeding great and precious promises. That's the same language used in Ephesians 1.19. Exceeding great. That through these promises that God will transform you into his image. So he's not promising something about this world or this body or this life or giving you something you need here or not. No, no. These promises have, have, have to do with his divine nature literally becoming one with you and you one with him. Because it says, escape the corruption. You have, I don't think many of us think about what we shall look like on that day. We have a little glimpse of it in the transfiguration mentioned in the Gospels where the Lord's body was transfigured. His face changed. And they saw his glory. 
Don't forget what Jesus prayed for will be answered. I will that they whom thou hast given me be with me what I am, that they may see my glory. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them. Well, knock, knock. One more knock. So we are going to literally shine like he did on that day. You didn't know it, all right? Well, you should have known that. Come on. We shall be like him, meaning like him. Like him. Say like him. What does like him mean? It means like him as he is, not as he was. Like him as he is. As he is means as he is now. We know no man after the flesh, not even Christ, it says in the Bible. Because when he walked the earth, he looked like us. On that day, we shall look like him. You like that, don't you, girl? Huh? You're going to shine brighter than the sun. That's what the Bible says. Hey, I'm giving you your eternal picture. Your eternal image and likeness in Jesus. That is what Paul meant in Ephesians 1.19. The exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. Let's go back to that verse. I got to hit you with it again. Verse 19 and 20. We got to see it. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, connected with verse 20, let's go, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is power that we have never seen yet at work. In this world, I mean. It's never been seen on planet Earth. What is the greatest miracle? Think, wait, wait. What is the greatest miracle you can ever talk about? The resurrection of Jesus. Because that's the greatest miracle of all time, period, in all eternity. And what is next to it? Your transformation. Because that's what it says. Keep it on the screen. You got to put verse 19 and 20 together. That's what it says. The exceeding greatness of his, of his power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So, so, so. It is so amazing that the gospel is the instrument God uses to accomplish this. That's what he means by the gospel is the power of God. What power? Exceeding great power. And then you look at Colossians 1.12. Put that on the, on the screen for us, please. That not only says we will partake of the divine nature, it says we will be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. In what? Light, 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 light. Remember when Jesus was on that mountain? He, he was shining with light brighter than the sun. And so will you because it says the saints in light. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet or right. It is our right. That word meet means to right, to be in the right place. God gave us the right uh, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Say, I am light. I'm light. Say, I am light in the Lord. Light. Say it again. Light. Say it again. Because, see, you don't think about that often in this life. Oh my goodness, I wish I can look better than that. I hate the way my, my face looks. <laughs> you look in the mirror and complain, oh, I wish I could have blonde hair rather than 
black. Oh, I wish my nose could be better than this. You are light. Say, I'm light. Yeah, just like Jesus. It says, he dwelleth, he dwelleth in the light which no man has seen or can see. No man in the natural has ever seen that light. You'll be right there with him. I know it's like a, oh my, what? Really? Light. The saints are in light. And the Bible calls us, we are light in the Lord. We are light in the Lord. It says so. So this is that exceeding greatness of his power. So what's his purpose? What is the real purpose of this exceeding great power? All right, let's go to Romans 8. Yay! I had to do it, I'm sorry. I've been keeping it in for a while and I just could not contain myself. And if I woke you up, I'm glad I just did. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, there is this Jaffa boy still alive in there. You know what I mean? Like, every, ah, you want to blow up a little bit. How can he become, <laughs> talking about this, you go, ah. Calm down now. Actually, you should not come down. Who? Okay, Romans 8.29 is fantastic. Romans 8.29, my good brother, it's okay. Maybe I didn't give you the verse, but let's go. Romans 8, verse 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be what? Conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the, the, the end result is we shall look like him. We will have his image. God already decided before eternity that we will be conformed to the image of his son. That's all there is to it. To me that is like mind boggling. It's beyond comprehension mentally in the natural. But then you look at 2 Corinthians 3 and, and uh, verse 18 says the same thing. You know, this can really heal you. This can deliver you from your problems with rejection and your self-image and all this loveliness. It's only for now, who cares? All the problems are just for today. It'll, it'll, it'll soon be done. We're closer to that moment than ever before. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass. When it talks about the glass, it talks about the Bible, by the way, because it's called the mirror. The glory of the Lord are changed into what? I want to hear you. What now? One more time? Not a different image, right? Wait. You're not paying attention. Eyes of fire. Hair of wool. Shining brighter than the sun. Voice like many waters. Stop. Same image. Have you ever read Revelation? How many have read Revelation? That's what you're going to look like. Say, my eyes, fire, my hair, white, my body, brighter than the sun. Believe it. Do you believe it? Wait, if you don't, what, what does it say? Same what? Same what? Let's read the whole verse. But we all, with what? Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the from who's doing it? The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is working that now. 
When? Now. When, when, when? Now. When? Now. now, one day, very soon, you're going to be raptured. Let's go to Philippians 3.20. And when you are raptured, immediately you're going to lose this vile body. Bang, gone forever. Whoa, I'm free from this body. For our, let's read it. Out. Look, I'm making you read it so you remember it, okay? For our what? What does that word mean? Citizenship. Means what? So let's read it with citizenship. So say, for our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse 21, please. Who will change our what? Stop, stop, stop. Your what? Look at your body. Say, this is vile. But, wait, wait. Who will change? Our vile body, that, out loud, read that, that it may be what? Fashion like unto his glory. Stop, stop. His what body? Glory. One more time. Glory. It's glorious. Yours is vile. <laughs> this is vile. His is glorious. Now say, my body, my body. Will, be will be glorious. 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 Glorious! According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now that tells me that this body is, 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 is a temporary. Yeah. You don't like your body? Ah, it's temporary. <laughs> One day you're going to look just like the Lord. Eyes of what? Hair of, you're going to look like the what? Sun. In fact, brighter than the sun. Two. Go, go, knock, knock. Knock yourself, say, I got to hear this. Now, now, it all began at your salvation, but this is the end result. And this is going to happen quicker and sooner than you will ever know. So this will, will happen at the rapture of the church. When we shall see him, we shall be like him. Say, when we see him, we'll be like him. One more time. What a day that will be, huh? So, let's, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about when he convicted you of sin. What kind of power it took to start that work that will end with your image being his image? That's the end result. But let's just talk about how it all began. So before your salvation, all of us were in great darkness. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 4.18. I'm going to show you where where your old address was. Your old address. Here's your old address. Our understanding was darkened. Go back to uh, verse 17. Just let's see a whole full, full picture, okay? Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles, walk in the vanity of their mind. Now, you know, there was you and me at one time. And verse 17, uh, 18 now says, having the understanding darkened, that was me and you, alienated from the life of God, me and you, through the ignorance that is in us back then, because of the blindness of our hearts. So before salvation, listen now, you were in such darkness that you called evil good. And you called good evil. And you called darkness light and light darkness. 
and you called uh, sweet bitter and bitter sweet. And before we got saved, this we called foolishness. The Christian life, ah, foolishness. Life in the spirit, ah, they are all crazy. Foolishness. To us, the Christian life was, we called it at one time, foolishness. We were so blind. We were just like those people mentioned in 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Well, let's just look at that again because it's, we need to remember what, what we were like anyways. The natural man, that's you and me before our salvation, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him, neither can he know them. We could not have known them for anything. It's like, it's like family members you talk to, you might as well be talking to a tree or, a, or, a, or a, an uncle. I talk to my uncle about Jesus. I might as well be talking to a stone. I said, all, all I said is, uncle, the Bible says you're a sinner. He cussed me out. Like foul. How dare ba, 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 you call me? I'm not a sinner. I'm a good man. He got so angry when I said the Bible says all have sinned and you're one of them. And he just went crazy on me. Began to attack God. How dare God call me a sinner? I'm a good man. I don't hurt nobody. Ba, 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 ba. He went on and on. It was like talking to the devil. Because neither can he know them. It's impossible to even, you can't even, even convince them. You can sit day and night and they're not going to listen to you. And they'll attack you for even preaching the gospel to them. How dare God send me to hell? What have I, and they'll tell you all that stuff. But that was me and you. That was us. What power it took to open our eyes. What power it took to change our hearts. What power it took to give us spiritual understanding. So before our salvation, we were in such darkness, we saw Evil, good, and good, evil, darkness, light, and light, darkness, bitter, sweet, and sweet, bitter. And we were completely blinded. So we could not even know the things of the Spirit of God. They were foolishness to us. What love is this? And, and you know what, what you, you think about? Um, we were dead to the things of the Spirit. So it says the natural man is dead. Spiritually is dead. Okay, a dead man is unable to deliver himself from darkness. We were in such darkness and such death before our salvation that we could not deliver ourselves from darkness, neither did we even have a desire for it. Why? Because we were dead. And when someone is dead, he doesn't know he's dead. You can't convict a dead body in a casket of anything. Dead. We were more dead than those dead bodies you see in those funeral homes. Spiritually, we were dead, 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 where we did not even know we were dead. And we were so spiritually dead, we didn't even have the ability to know we were dead or that we needed to be delivered. But one day, a mighty miracle happened. 
a miracle of grace more wondrous than anything we can talk about that took place within us that shattered our darkness and our eyes opened exceeding power exceeding great power that literally shattered our darkness inside of us and suddenly <gasps> I need Jesus instantly we cried I'm a sinner woe is me And now something happened. Suddenly we, we received spiritual understanding. That a minute ago we didn't have it. It's like a, a veil of darkness lifted off our hearts. And the, and the, and the, the darkness was shattered inside of us in such a mighty way. That for us, we did not even know how quickly it happened. And why it happened. Chosen in him before the foundation of the world. And the Holy Spirit said, mine. And he shattered the darkness inside of you. And suddenly, <gasps> it's called regeneration. And, and, and now suddenly something happened to you that you did not even know was going to happen. Acts 5.13, please. So, uh, sorry, Acts 5.31. Such a powerful moment. It's a powerful moment. When Jesus gave you the ability to repent. Because you were too dead to repent. Look what it says. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for to give repentance. To give repentance. You could not have repented on your own power. You were too dead to repent. Didn't have the ability to repent. So God Almighty empowered you Because Jesus said very clearly, no man can come unto me unless the Father draws him. Giving you the ability to not only see your need for a Savior and salvation, but you actually, God gave you the power to repent where you actually were able to repent because of the work inside of you that began that moment. So that is when it all started. That's when that explosion called Dunamis Power began working in you, and it's still working today, and you don't feel it because it's not something you know in the natural. It's working within your spirit with such mighty power. It's more, more power than anything known in the natural. Because it says, according to the, to the power that works in us. We all remember that, right? Come on, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or even think according to what? To the power that's at work in us. What power? I'm just talking about it. The exceeding. Say exceeding. exceeding. Greatness, Greatness of its power, of its power. Towards, me. towards me. All right, now, it's going to get a little deeper here. I... I, I I hope you can, you can manage, right? Lift your hands and say, Father, help me. In Jesus' name, take the scales off my eyes. All right, now. Repentance. The act of repentance is a miracle because, because, because sin has been such a part of of the human nature that we delighted in it. Sin was such 
a part of our nature, it became more precious to us than our liberty. Because we gladly surrendered to it and became slaves to sin. Frankly, sin was dearer to you than your soul. Because you gladly lost your soul to keep sin. Think about what I'm saying. That our sin was so a part of our human nature that we delighted in it. It was more precious to us than, than liberty, than then life, we were slaves to sin. It was more precious than our health, our strength, or our money. Because we spent all that and more on it. It was dearer to us than our own soul. Because we were willing to lose our soul to keep that sin and the, the love for sin so we had no ability to hate it because we loved it how many were there that was you back then right we could not have hated sin because we loved it it was dearer to us than our life it was our delight God Almighty broke through that. And suddenly, something happened to you. You said to yourself, Lord, I'm so sorry for my sin. You could not have said that before because you were not sorry. You were happy and delightful and loved it. It was your life dearer than your riches, your health, your happiness, your soul. And now, Lord, I'm sorry. You could not have said that without God's power. And then you made another decision that you could not have made in a billion, trillion, decillion years. You said, I will forsake it. I don't want it anymore. Whoa, 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 wait. A day ago, you were, that was your delight and your life more dear to you than your soul. Now you say, I don't want it. I'm walking away. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. To take it out of our hearts, which was our very delight. Only God can do that. You loved it. Now you hate it. Hate for sin is the sign you're being transformed by the power of God to be made into the image of Jesus. How many hate sin? You're on the way. Because if you love sin, you're not in the kingdom. That is proof I'm in the kingdom. Woo, dear God. I'm going to shout one more time. One, two, three. How can you not shout? Because now you know, hey, by the fact I hate sin, I'm really saved. I don't need to speak in tongues to prove I'm saved. <laughs> I went one day, I was in a church. And this poor woman went up to the preacher. She said, am I saved? He said, talk in tongues. We'll see. <laughs> talk in tongues? No. That is as foolish as to look at a guy who is drunk and say, let me smell you. You can see he's drunk. He talks like that drunk. He walks like that drunk. Yeah, everything about him is drunk. You don't have to go smell him to know he's drunk. He's drunk. My daddy used to say to us back when we were kids, if you ever saw a, a drunk man walking down, down the road, cross the road and go to the other side of the other road. We never kids went and said, hey, let me smell you. Never. <laughs> it was stupid to say, let me hear you talk in tongues. No, they, talk, they, 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 they walk like a drunk. They look like a drunk. Same thing with the new birth. You don't have to speak in tongues. You hate sin. That's the proof 
you are saved. How many hate sin? You're in on the way to heaven. That's it. But more than that, how many want to forsake sin? <laughs> You're really on the way. Because that is impossible without the power of God working in you. Say it's impossible. impossible. Say it's impossible, it's impossible without the power of God working in me for me to hate sin and forsake it. Only the power of God can, can do it. Because it's impossible for you because the human nature was so connected to sin. Nothing but the power of God can pull you out of it. Okay. I told you. A little deep tonight. We, let's, let's go to Job 15. The Bible says in verse 16 that sinners drink iniquity like water. That's how much they love sin. It's like water. They drink water. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like... That's us before salvation. We, we were drinking sin like we were drinking Coke or water, whatever, liquids. Doctor, how much water do we need a day to stay alive? Quite, quite a bit, right? Whatever. A big bottle, two bottles, whatever. A sinner cannot survive without drinking sin. Like we could not have survived without drinking water. Our body needs water. The sinner needs sin to stay alive. It says so. He drinks it like water. That was us back then. But now we say, I hate it. I don't want it. I'm leaving it behind. Never, never, never. No way. I'm not going to go. Never will I go back into that world. So hatred for sin is the work of the Holy Spirit. And only the power of God can give it to you. And when the power of God gives it, then you know it. Like in 2 Timothy 2, 25, 26, it talks about this. And, and that is God's power. I know I'm, I'm showing you things maybe you had never thought about before. But it says that you and I need to instruct in meekness those that oppose the gospel. If God, preadventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth... Verse 26 says that they may recover themselves out of the snare or trap of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. The devil can take that sinner so quickly back into that dark kingdom. But only those who've repented are free from that. Now, let's talk about one more thing. What power it takes now to keep us in the kingdom? I kind of explained it the best I could about the power it took to regenerate you and to convict you and to give you hatred for sin. How about keeping you? All right. Let's look at, are you, are you enjoying this? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I'm not done yet. The best is yet to come. I really want to shout, but I'm really having to. He's easy now. <laughs> Back years ago when I was in this church, I would get so excited, I would kick my shoe like this. <laughs> and one time, one time, it, David, you are a wonderful son-in-law. And one time it got stuck up here. <laughs> and we didn't know how to break that thing down. We used to have these massive things right under for the lights. Now they, they put all this stuff, but we didn't have this cover back then. So I did this and book my, my shoe got up there. And they came with a big something too. Remember that? Yeah. So you didn't know I could do that, did you? <laughs> 
See, I like these shoes because they're easy to just whoop, flip right off. <laughs> I'm having such a good time tonight with you. First Peter 1, <laughs> three, 3 to 5. Can we put First Peter, First Peter on, uh, chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. This is so powerful, so incredible. Oh, wow, this is a good one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord. Let's read that together out loud. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Next verse, please. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you. Next verse, please. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto what? Salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, now, now think for a minute. Kept. Say, I'm kept. Yes. Now say, from what? Say again, from what? So the Bible says we are kept by the power of God, but the, you, you have to ask yourself, from what? You are kept from the dominion of sin that dwells still within us. Wait, wait. That part of sin is still inside here. Okay. I need to explain this. When you got saved, you were free from the penalty of sin. So God forgave you your past sins. Now you must be free from the power of sin. That's called sanctification. But when you see Jesus, you'll be free from the presence of sin. So we still are not free from the presence of sin. And we're not free totally from the power of sin because it still is at work within us. That's why Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? You can read Romans 7, it's all there. So we are free from the penalty of sin. We're not free from the power yet. From glory to glory, we're getting better, yeah, but we're not free yet. Nor are we free from the presence of sin, yet we will be when we, we see the Lord. So, we are kept by the power of God that this dominion of sin inside of us will not pull us back into the world and into its domain. We are kept by the power of God from being overcome by Satan who's always seeking our destruction we're kept by the power of God from leaving Jesus. We could not have kept ourselves from the power of sin within us. Nor can we keep ourselves from being saved from the devil who wants to destroy us. Nor can we keep ourselves from leaving the kingdom. We have no ability within ourselves. Because we in ourselves are weak like water. All right. I'm going to say something. I'm going I'm to, in fact, read it first. And you got to pay attention because you could miss this. There was more in Adam to resist sin before the fall. Yet it overwhelmed him. Wait, wait. David, you'll like this one. Adam was not conceived in sin. Meaning he could have easily resisted sin. But sin overwhelmed him. Even though he could have resisted. 
we are conceived in sin. He wasn't. If sin overwhelmed a man who was not born or conceived in sin, what chance do we have? That's why we need the power of God. So think about he could have resisted because there was nothing in him yet. He was still in his holy, pure, innocent state. I preached that message last night to Michael and Jessica. On the phone, they said, Dad, this is really powerful stuff. So I preached it to them before I preached it to you because I said, you need to hear what I'm going to talk about because you're the pastor, not me. You make sure you say yes. He said, oh, my goodness, this is really good stuff. And especially when I said that, Jesse said, say it again, Dad. I said, baby, Adam was not conceived in sin. He could have said no to it. When Eve said, eat it, he could have said no. But he did not. Why? Because sin even then was stronger than Adam. Sin. Think about the third of all angels who were purer than Adam, nearer to God than Adam, more powerful than Adam, and a third of them were thrown out of heaven because sin overwhelmed them too. So, so, for the power of God to keep us, think about this, for the power of God to keep us is more powerful and more miraculous than if you should hold a candle in the hurricane and that thing stays lit. And I'll repeat it. You know those hurricanes that came by here a few months ago? Could you have held a candle and the candle was still light, lit in that wind? God keeping us with all the corruptions within us and the temptations around us. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. For God to keep us with all the corruption still in us and all the temptations outside of us is more wondrous and more powerful than if a candle should stay lit in an open field during a hurricane. It's more powerful, more miraculous to keep me and you with our corruption within and temptations without than if you should take a candle and dive into the middle of the ocean and that candle will stay lit. If you ever saw a candle stay lit during a hurricane, you'll say that's a miracle. If that candle stays lit and you're diving under the water, that's a miracle. It's a bigger miracle to keep you lit. With the corruptions in and the temptations out, God keeps that light shining in you. My God, the corruptions and temptations are stronger than any hurricane. Lift your hands and thank God for it. That God would keep us in the faith. With all that power in us and outside of us, fighting us daily. Yet he will not allow that power to bring us down. We are still lit up with Jesus within. We are still shining for the Lord within. Hallelujah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Now wait, hold it. You can't let it anyways. <laughs> Whoever wrote that song should have, should, 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 should have written it. The Lord makes it shine. Not me make it shine. Because I don't have the power to make it shine. <laughs> to change the song, huh? Jim, you remember, for you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, 
that you show for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness out of darkness out of darkness into his marvelous light into his marvelous light you should learn that song here i just i just uh, sang you a portion of peter for you are a chosen generation a royal priest of the holy nation that you show for the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light say i'm light give me a lower key jim a lower key jim a lower key <laughs> For you are a chosen generation. Wait, wait, you sing it. Why am I singing it? I'm the preacher. Go, 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 Jim. You are a chosen generation. Oh, they got it. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light, into his marvelous Wait, wait, you know the song? You, you really know the song? Oh, it's just up there. <laughs> yeah, but only a part of it showed up up there. This song was written by Jeannie Klattenberg, Alex Klattenberg's wife who's got church and the sun here. We always used to sing it. But listen, I'm not done yet. I'm not done. Give me a few more minutes. Sometimes you just want to sing, you know? All right. Thank you, Jim. We'll sing in, a little bit, in just a little bit and bless the Lord. So think about the mighty power is re that's required to keep us. Say, I am more than a conqueror. One more time. I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. So, to preserve us and to keep us so powerful. If God be for us, who can be against us? Wow. Let's go to Isaiah 41 verse 10. I'm almost done, but I, I really had to, to, I had to bring this word to you tonight because I want you to realize how valuable you are to the Lord. How expensive you are. That he would, he would use the exceeding riches of his power to save you, to convict you before that and save you, and now to keep you and transform you into his image. That's the end result. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Next verse, please. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Next verse, please. Thou shalt seek them, and you'll not find them, even them that contended with you. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. Jesus, I worship you. The same God who brought Israel out of Egypt... Help me, Jim. That brought them through the Red Sea. Through dry land. Still rains. And lives. Lift your hands to heaven, saints. Munch him. I live, I live because he is risen. I live, I live 
with power over sin. I live, I live in Jesus because He is risen. I live, I live to worship Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because you're alive, because you're alive, because you're alive, I live. I want to just talk to those of you that have not yet surrendered totally to the Lord. Chosen in Him before the foundation of the world, and that's why you're here tonight. You did not come because some friend brought you. This is no accident. This is a divine moment for your destiny. Everyone sitting here that hasn't yet fully surrendered to the Son of God. This is the moment that God planned for you from eternity past that you should become His child. You on the balcony, you here, that are sitting, listening, and have listened to this message about the power it took to convict us, to save us, to keep us, and now changing us into the image of Jesus. You're not here by accident. God brought you here. This moment may never come your way again. This service may never happen as today again for you. So this is the moment where you listen to that inner voice of the Holy Spirit within you that is saying to you, you are mine. But He gives us the choice to say, yes, Lord, I'm ready to follow. Even though chosen before the foundation of the world, yet we have to say yes to the Lord. Aren't you tired of fighting sin? Aren't you tired of those temptations that come at you stronger than a hurricane? Aren't you tired of the corruption within your soul? It's time to be free from that. And only the Son of God can accomplish this in your life. And your choice is easy. Your choice is simply saying, yes, Lord, that's what I want for my life. I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired, Lord. I need freedom from this evil within me. Every head bowed for a minute. Lord, I pray that you'll open their eyes and take the scales off their eyes and let them see their need for you today. Their need for salvation now, not tomorrow, now. For this is the hour, this is the day of salvation. It is now. Your word says, now is the time, now is the day. Open our eyes in Jesus' glorious name. Look at me, all of you, a minute. There sat a young man one time in this very building who got saved on a Sunday night like tonight. He was on his motorcycle the next morning on Markham Woods, not far from here. 
ran into a wall and died. His brother was a fellow named Kevin Sweeney that was friends with the doctor and Mary and myself. And Kevin at that time was my trainer. I had just come out of the hospital and they were asked me to do all these things at some place and check my heart and this stuff. And he comes in that day, that afternoon on Monday, Kevin comes in. He was so broken and sobbing. He said, my brother died this morning. But thank God he got saved last night. Nobody knows how short life is. So don't put it off. This is the moment for it. To say, I want what you've been talking about tonight. I want that power working in my life. Because I don't have the power within me to even live the Christian life. So everyone now, lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. I want to hear you pray. Because when, when you pray, God begins to move. In the Spirit, please begin to pray out loud. And those of you that really need a change, you need to be delivered from, the, from that bondage in your soul, that corruption. You want to be free from the very darkness you've been living in? This is the moment for you. Then God will give you the power to live the Christian life and He's working that power in you now, even putting the desire in you to say yes to Jesus. If you'll say yes to Jesus, as people are praying, keep praying out loud. As people are praying, I want you to get up out of your seat. And you start walking down here and get on your knees down here and we're going to pray for you. Right now, just get up and start walking. Everyone else, keep praying. And you who need the Lord, get down here now. Don't even wait a minute. Come on, right now. I'm waiting for you. And especially the Lord is waiting for you. Keep praying out loud in the Spirit, all of you. You can come down from the balcony. Just come and just kneel right here. The Lord is meeting you now here. And the miracle will begin in your life tonight here in this auditorium. You come right now. Don't negotiate with God, just surrender. You know the evil that has gotten hold of your heart. You know the darkness you've been living in. It's time to be free from that darkness. It's time to be free from that darkness, from that addiction, from that bondage. Keep praying, saints. God is talking to them. This is the work of the Holy Spirit here. Keep praying, keep praying, come on, out loud. If the Lord is knocking on your heart, you obey right now. Can we have some of you sweet people who, who pray with them, come pray with them right now, come on. And there's more that, are, that need to come, you come right now. Don't wait a second. You just come and kneel right here so we can pray with you. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Can we all stand as we're praying for these sweet people? Stretch your hands towards them all. Lord, they've come in need t tonight to meet you, O blessed Son of God. Lord of Lords and King of Glory. Now everyone just repeat after me, Dear Lord Jesus, 
out loud, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe you came to this earth to die for me on a cross. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all of my heart you rose from the dead and you are alive and alive forevermore. And I believe you are coming again. I need you, Lord. I need you now. Oh, blessed Jesus. I am sorry for my sin. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me with your blood. Come into my heart. I'll receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Wonderful Lord Jesus. Right now I proclaim you are my Savior. You are my Lord. You are my Redeemer and my King forever. I no longer belong to myself. I no longer belong to the world. I no longer belong to the devil. I belong to you. I am yours. You are mine. God Almighty is my Heavenly Father. You are my Savior. The Holy Spirit, my Comforter. I am born again. Amen. Now, Father, you heard that prayer. I pray that change in them begins now and from glory to glory you'll transform each one of them in Jesus' wonderful and glorious name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. And you sweet people, can we, can we help them up? God oh, bless you, that's precious. You can go to your, to your seats for a minute, please. Welcome into the family. And can we, can we just bless the Lord right now and, and just let's worship Him for a few moments. Father, I thank you for your blessed word and promises. And now, Lord, I do pray you'll touch those who are in need of a healing. You are our healer. You are our savior and healer. I give you praise, Lord. You're the God that healeth me, O oh the Lord, my healer. Let's declare it. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. Healed my disease. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, my healer. Once again, you are the God. your word you sent, you sent your, your word, word and healed my disease you are the Lord my healer you are the God that healed me you are Healer, you sent your word, you, you 
sent your word and healed my disease. You sent your word, you sent your word and healed my disease. You sent your word, you sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus. Just a whisper, Jesus, oh Jesus, this mic depart in your name, glorious power in your name, oh Jesus. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you. You are Jesus, all glorious, preparing us your temple, born as living stones, 
where you're enthroned as you rose from death in power come rise within our worship rise upon our praise let the hand that saw you raise clothe us in your glory draw us Oh, the glory of your wonderful presence. We, your temple, give you reverence. Someone to my right has been having troubles with your stomach. You've had a lot of pain in your stomach. Just as we were worshiping, you felt a beautiful warmth come upon you. It's a part of God healing you. Those in need of a healing physically, place your hand on that problem. Place your hand on that sickness or just place your hand on anyone on your body. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal your people. I rebuke that sickness and disease in your holy name, Jesus. Remove it now, Lord, from your people. In your blessed name. Lift your hands, the beautiful healing and owning right now just began to flow just moments ago. Someone with a neck problem has just been healed. Uh, a skin problem, a lot of itching, a lot of itching. God is healing someone. A circulation problem in somebody's left leg. You've been losing feeling in your left leg. But now you just felt the touch of the Lord. Just ask Him to heal you. Just ask Him to heal you. I just saw, I just saw someone's you have an infection in the in the right eye the Lord's healing it you're on the balcony somewhere lift your hands and ask him to heal you saints right now this is the moment uh, a problem in someone's chest Lord I thank you for the miracles I give you praise Lord God I give you praise wonderful Lord ask him now to heal you this is the moment this is the moment 
I give you praise, Lord. If you feel that touch on your body, some of you feel like like warmth, others maybe felt like a gentle tingle and you go, go through your body. That's the power of God. Check it out. Do what you were not able to do now. Just for the next few moments, if the Lord is healing you, get up out of your seat. Come line up to my left over here. Do it quick. Every one of you just pray right now. Lift your hands and pray. Lift your hands and thank Him for what He's doing. If the Lord is healing you, if you feel His touch on your body, get down quickly and come stand over there, please. That's right, quickly. Lord, I give you praise. I, that, that person I saw with the, with the problem in your stomach was somewhere right over this area here. Right over here. You've been having troubles with your stomach, all I know, and a lot of pain. The Lord completely healed you. The Lord totally healed you. Marie, uh, uh, please bring him up. Chad, get up here, quick. What happened to this man? What was wrong with your shoulder? How many years have you had it for? Six years. Lord, and it's gone now? <sighs> thanks, 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 thanks. What, what happened to that man? I see the anointing on him. Here, come here, come here, come here, sir. You have cancer, you said? Is that what he said? What do you feel on you now? Come here. I felt the Holy Spirit come over. Come, my come head. closer. Came over my head, over my shoulders. And, and how do you know the cancer around, is gone? Around, what, what? Around, huh? around my back and around here. And you've had pain somewhere or where? Yeah, it's a mass, it's a cancerous mass for about four inches. Spread your answer with him. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke it. We rebuke it. Just a second, just a second. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, every bed, every bed, every bed goes, every bed goes. Keep him there. What happened here? Come, come, my dear, come. I wasn't planning on this, but I'm glad the Lord is doing it. How bad, how bad was it, my dear? It's been hurting, you said, for years? What happened? Well, you did. You, you had a car accident? Move it now, darling. All of it. Well, thank God it doesn't hurt anymore. David, what happened? Her neck and shoulder just got healed. Come here, come here, darling. Come here. Can you help? Can you help that man up? But don't touch the one, don't touch him. Gentlemen, first. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. What was wrong with you? My neck and shoulders the past few weeks have been so tense. And I just felt this warm, like, relaxing presence of Him. I didn't expect this, I'll tell you. What happened, David? All of her sinuses were congested, and she can now breathe. Come here, darling, right here. In just a second, I'm going to pray for the students, so I'm not done yet. Lord, thank you for that healing. Your Jesus, your glories. Never again, Lord. Let her have an amazing spiritual experience in Jesus' name. That's a strong healing right there with that man. Tell me, David. In 2017, he was in a car accident and he couldn't move his neck without major pain. And now the Lord touched him tonight and there's no more pain whenever he moves his neck. I can see the anointing on you. So you've had that for a while? Yes, sir. Since 2017, I rolled about six times and I had five spots of scar tissue in my head and severe neck injuries. I had 12 neck and back surgeries and I don't have any pain right now. First time since then. Who was sitting next to him? Who was sitting next to him? 
somewhere right next to him got the overflow of the healing was he on the balcony help him up someone right next to him was healed and didn't even know it where were you sitting who was who was next to you? It was a lady and a couple next to me. What? A lady and a guy next to me. All I know is a skin problem was healed right next to you. Somebody's had troubles with their skin. And the Lord healed you minutes before God healed him. You sensed something and didn't know what it was. Boy, he is having a marvelous touch. Take your seats, take your seats. And help these ladies up. You mind? No, not the man, the ladies. The ladies. They can go to their seats. Now help him up. Help this young man up. All of you stretch your hands towards him. And say, we the church command this cancer to go and never come back. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pick this gentleman up. Can, can someone help him, please? Where are you from? Okay, but you live here. Auburndale currently. Is this your first time? No. You're a member here? Y yes, I strongly support your ministry. What is it? Strongly support your ministry. No, Michael and Jesse, not me. I, hey, listen, they're my children. And I thank God for them. And they love you way more than you can imagine. My children love their people. And so I did not know I was going to speak to, here, you know, tonight. It just happened. So they, uh, Jesse and Michael said, well, Michael was tired. And I understand that, you know, he traveled all that. So, okay, I'll be there Sunday night. Thank God I'm in town. I was just in Canada a few days ago. But I'm here now, so I love it. But thank you for what you said. But listen, I want you to support my children. Because their ministry is needed now more than you realize around the world, you know. I'm, I'm on my last mile of the way, you know. They're, they're just starting. I've been in it for 48 years. That's a long time. That's older than Jessica and older than Michael. I began before they were born, okay? So I have a little stretch to go, but I'm not all done yet. Or almost. But the thing is, when I see these healings, I think this is what God is doing. And he's been doing it for years and years, and he keeps doing it. Now, I'm so proud of my precious Jessica and Michael. And what God is doing with them is just amazing. But thank you for what you said. I pray the Lord will keep you healed. Oh, I didn't pray for him, but it's all right. I just said, Sometimes I got to be careful what I do with my hand. My goodness. I to keep it in my pocket. I used to. I used to wear ties years ago. And I gave one of And then I gave my ties away. One of them was the dean of Regent University at the time. And he said, I like your ties. That's all yours. About a few months later, he came back. He said, you know what? That's a powerful tie you got. So what? He said, you know, he said, I just take it and do this, and people fall when I do this. I said, what did you say? He said, there's power on that tie, brother, and I'm keeping it. I said, okay, whatever. I was shocked when he said that. And he was very evangelical, like very, like, reserved, very, you know, quiet man. But he was having fun with that tie. Help him down. You know, I don't understand the part of God. It just works. What happened to you, darling? She suggested she had a sore throat. She couldn't even sing tonight. She's supposed to be in our David, choir. David, lay hands on her. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing her from the top. Lay hands on her head. In 
Jesus' name. There goes the anointing, darling. That's it. I love it. All right. See, David, that anointing is flowing through you now. Oh, you've been anointed all your life anyways. What happened to you, my dear? Pardon? Stomach, stomach pains. Are you the one from that section? Ah, come here. I've been waiting for you also for a while now. You were the first one the Lord showed me. And I saw someone over that section with a problem in your tummy. From what? You've been having pain a couple of years and no, okay, no, and okay, but no one told you why? You didn't check it out? How old are you? 18, you know the Lord loves you? He does. How long have you, have you been saved? You and a half? Where are you from? Connecticut. Listen, darling, the Lord is telling me some, something to tell you. You are more precious to him than anything. He wants you to know that. You're loved, dearly, dearly loved. Don't let anyone tell you different. And Lord, I pray you'll touch her now. Thank you for that healing. But heal her soul. Heal her soul. In Jesus' name. It's all right, it's all right. Heal her whole being, Lord. In the glorious name of Jesus, heal this precious life. Oh my goodness, my goodness, what I'm sensing for you. Oh. Where are you? Where's your family? Your husband and mother-in-law are up, up there. God bless you all. God bless you, darling. Would you all stand? Thank you, dear. Thank you. Okay, just just one more. What 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 happened to her? Okay, okay. Come, come. Lord, thank you for this healing. We give you praise. How long have you suffered with that? Years. Years. Every bit of it goes in Jesus' mighty name. Every bit of it in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for that anointing. Give you all the praise. Amen. God bless you. Now, I want all the students get down here. It's almost like the whole crowd. I love these young people. No, no, don't kneel. Just stand up. I want you, all of you, to listen to me very carefully, especially you that are watching on, on social media. Come, come, give me a camera here. I want to talk to him. No, come, come, or I can. Yeah, there you are, girl. Bless your darling heart. I want to, I want to tell all of you that are not yet a part of, of, of the school here at Jesus Image. I have been in ministry 48 something years now. I've been in, as, as a Christian now. 50, oh, over 50 years. I have never seen the beauty of the Lord as I see it on these young people. And I'm being really honest with you all. When I come to the school and I minister at the school, I'm just amazed by, by the beauty of Jesus in these young, young people. Is that camera on my face, my dear? Looks like she has it on my chest. I'm not sure. Think, am I talking to them or is my church talking to them? I'm only having fun with you. So, the reason I'm, I'm doing this tonight is because I want to pray for these amazing young people and some not too young. There's like a few, like one, two or three around that feel young anyways. But the school, this school here that God has has established is a life-changing uh, school. And I don't say it because it's my children. It's just a fact. 
When I walk in, as I did a few days ago, and the, the joy of the Lord on their faces and the joy of the Lord in their hearts, it's truly uh, heavenly. And the reason I'm, I'm talking to you because I want you to come to the school. If you, you've been thinking about it, well, let's do it. For the first time now, it's open to the internationals. And a lot of people are showing interest right now. In fact, I think they've had something like 200 or more. Who can tell me? Uh, Where is Carlo or Ryan? Ryan, come, 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 come with me. So what over, and Carlo, dear, come, please. Over 200 already international students have applied. Now, this is Ryan, and we all love and call his wife. They're wonderful people. Let them know you love them. And the thing is, the thing that is so exciting is what's going to happen in 2024 when this well, this is, sorry, 2023, we're still 2023. So beginning this year, now this is, uh, you know, graduation is in the next few days, but now school begins again, I believe in... End of August, beginning of September. August, okay. If you have not signed up, I'm telling you, you better do it quick because it's gonna really fill up big time with the internationals. So whether you're in the US or Canada, or somewhere outside the US and Canada, you need to register. And I'm telling you that because I'm here. Now I show up like once a month, whatever, here and there. It has become, uh, I, I don't even know how to describe it to me anyways, personally. It is the most refreshing experience of my life. Because these young people pull it right out of you. And I really would recommend highly you immediately sign up. And the people said, amen. See the excitement? Did you, did you hear that amen, how strong it was? <laughs> so you do it. And the information is online, so they can, they, they, they can do it. All right, let's pray for these wonderful young people. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you've done Thank you for what you're going to do with the school, with Jesus School, the Jesus Image School. Now, Lord, I pray as they go home, stretch your hands towards them, all of you. Lord, as they go home for the summer, strengthen them even more. Establish them even greater. That they will come back, Lord, not only strengthened, but anointed with a deeper anointing on their life. I thank you, sweet Jesus, for what you've done. And I thank you for what you're going, to, you're going to do. To you be the glory. Wow. Sweet redeemer. Kids, would you join hands? I'm sensing something here. Camera guy, you mind just sitting back somewhere, maybe behind me or something? Lord, I thank you for that divine anointing on them. We'll go home with them. will go home with them. Your Jesus, all glorious, shh. Young people, 
Open your eyes a second. Lord, in the mighty name of your Son, let your mighty, blessed, holy anointing flow on these young people. Touch, 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 Lord, touch, Lord. Touch Lord, touch Lord, anoint Lord, anoint Lord, anoint Lord, anoint Lord, anoint Lord, anoint Lord. Are you sensing this? Anoint Lord, anoint with fire Lord, anoint with fire Lord, anoint with fire Lord. Anoint with fire, Lord. Anoint with fire, Lord. Anoint with fire, Lord. Anoint with fire, Lord. With fire, Lord. In Jesus' name. When I say three, I want you to say fire. One, two, three. Lord, anoint them and use them in the glorious name of your Son, Jesus. Now lift your hands and receive it. Thank you, Lord, for that anointing. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. How many of you are sensing something on you? Young people, just wave. Just wave at me here. That's the power of God already on you. Now, for just a few moments, I'm going to dismiss in just a few minutes, but a few moments, i got to talk to you. And Jim, let, let, let the Lord lead you. Help, help some of them up, will you guys? Help them up. I was going to lay hands on you, but, but the Lord said, just pray for them. Because I don't need to lay hands. The Lord has laid his hands on you. But I have got to just, if you'll allow me, just a few moments with you. And uh, we'll dismiss in just five minutes. But this is important for your life and your future. You are an instrument in the hands of the Lord already. You young people. You're already an instrument in the Lord's hands. And you are pliable. You're very pliable. Which means God can do anything He wants with you. Because you have become more pliable while here. And what the Lord sometimes has to do with us, He has to empty us to refill us. And what's happened to you in the last little while is God has emptied a lot out to pour in what you really need for this time in your life. I can, I can look at some of you I've gotten to know quite well and I see the amazing change even in the last year. Because now what I see is the Lord has taken you and turned you upside down and shaken out of you some of the things that were there and now he turned your eyes right up and began to fill you with his not only his power but more than that his his substance because I see the substance of the Lord on your face I've, I, you know I've been in it long long enough to recognize when you see the Lord in somebody's eyes you know you see Jesus shining right through them like these girls and these guys here because you see it you've been there long enough to recognize it what is important now is that when you go home do not neglect time in the scriptures the most important thing you can do is maintain this life and this walk as you're grounded in scripture 
take your time now to really get to know the mind of God through his word. That's the greatest thing you can do for your life. And as you study it, you ask the Lord to reveal it. And I promise you, he will do that for you. And when you come back, and many of you I'm sure will, I'm asking all of you to come back because then I'm going to miss you if you're not here. I'll be looking for you. Oh, what happened? But the thing is, when you come back, you will come back with, with strength that is going to bless not only the internationals that are coming, but people all around you that you'll meet here and there. Your future is brighter than your yesterday. Say that, my future is brighter than my past, more glorious than my yesterday. Because that's what the Bible says about the path of the righteous. So God is raising you here, an army of ministers, and you are needed more than you realize. Please hear me out. You are more needed than you know. There's death all around us. And we are the ones that carry the life of God in us. And young people today, God can use you in ways that I never had the choice to see or the chance to see in my own life when I was younger. Because the world has changed. The darker the world, the more they need the light in us. You understand that? If I had a candle right now and the light's on, ah, it doesn't matter because it's lit up. But if we, if we lose power, my candle becomes a leader, showing us the way out. Think about what I'm saying to you. Darkness today in this world is getting thick, meaning the light of God in you is more needed now than a year ago. Because you become now a leading light. People say, hey, I need to be around this man to see the way out of darkness. Don't lose that. Don't ever lose that. And I'm going to pray before you leave that God will establish his light in you and through you while you're gone. Amen. Now, one, one other thing and then I'm done. Family is important, but family cannot interfere with the call of God. My family tried, and I said to my dad, I would obey you in everything except this. Because he said to me, I don't want you preaching the gospel. I said, Dad, I honor you. I would obey anything you say. But God has called me into the ministry, and that's what I will do. And he said, if you do, we will disown you. In our culture, it's not an empty threat. I had a choice to make. Do I obey my dad or God? And finally I said, Lord, you'll take care of this one. But I had to obey the Lord. Because the call of God is more important than my own life and your life too. And when I obeyed the Lord and I began preaching, I did not tell my parents because I was afraid they're going to disown me. But God saved them. Literally a month after I began preaching. And now they came into the kingdom and God took care of it, you see. So family is wonderful. We all need family. We ought to honor them, honor mom and dad and love them and take care of them for the rest of their life. And I mean financially for the rest of, the, of their life. We need to take care of our parents as they get older. That's just our duty. But the thing is the call. The call of God is more precious than anything in life. And every one of you that's here is called to serve the Lord. And the church needs you. And the world needs you. And I believe you're all ready to serve the Lord. So Lord, establish that call upon them. Establish that call in them. And let your light shine in and through them even mightier as they're gone. Let it even increase while, while they're home. 
that their loved ones and friends will look at them and say, something has happened to you, I want to know more. Let them become light, a lighthouse where they are. Let them become shining lights everywhere they go. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, establish them in the faith. Give them a hunger for your word they've never known. Lord, I ask you to do for them what I've asked you to do for me. Establish them in your word and establish your word in them. In Jesus' name. So lift your hands and say, Father, in Jesus' name, establish your word in my life and establish my life in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God love you all. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise for what he's done. Can I dismiss him, Ryan? Where's Ryan? Okay. All right. So now, you sweet people, you can all go. You students, stay. Just stay. You mind? It's a deal. Okay. So everybody can go. God love you. Or you can stay and listen too. I'll let you. But service is over, and Michael and Jesse will be back next week. So actually, this week is graduation, and we'll see you all. I didn't realize that dear man is still up there. <laughs> my, my. You just left him alone. Somebody please pick him up. <laughs> dear Lord. Guys, guys, wait, 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 keep him there, keep him there. You want more? Wait, wait, brother. It's not, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Come on, come, come closer, come closer. Stand right here. You want a little more? No. Face the kids, face the young people. Face the young people, not, not me. Young people, stretch your hands. Say, in Jesus' name. Now you go do that in when you're home. Yeah. Say touch. If, if anybody, if any, if anybody comes to bother you, just go touch. <laughs> you better pick him up. I think he's had plenty. Jim, thank you, thank you. Listen, listen. I really want to talk to you a little bit. So you want to sit on the floor? I'll sit with you. Oh, this is my favorite thing to do right here. All right. Now listen to me. Oh my goodness, I'm most marvelous. Hey guys, Michael here from Jesus Image in Orlando, Florida. We are so excited to be coming to the West Coast of America, specifically California. And we really believe this is the Lord and that he is about to move in great power and glory in America. And it's an honor for us to be part of that storyline. That being said, we want to broadcast these incredible meetings to the world. As you know, the Lord has really blessed uh, the media ministry here at Jesus Image. We have an amazing team, but at the end of the day, we all know and are aware of the fact that it is the Holy Spirit. We need a separate system to broadcast the Jesus Tour and our other events on the road. The cost of that is $350,000. And so I'm asking all of you to pray and to deeply consider being a part of helping us see the nations tune in to the move of the Holy Spirit on the west coast so would you pray about sowing a seed and walking in generosity i know the lord will bless you for it as we give back to him what he's already given us for the sake and glory of his name